Hello everyone, it's Lava Lamp, and today I'll be showcasing what may be my favorite mod that has been added in a very long time to the Illusion games. It is called Next Gen Skin Texture, and it's a mod made by Hanman. If you do not know what this skin texture is doing right now, let me give you a further clue by pressing S5, turning down my main light, and turning on a spotlight that I set behind the character's hand over here. This is it, we finally have some good quality subsurface scattering. Now in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to set up this skin texture and optimize the skin texture for the best experience possible. Let's head up into the character creator for the next step. Alright, once you're in your character creator, follow these simple steps to be sure that your character is set up correctly. First off, I think it's important to mention that Hotman made it possible so that you wouldn't sacrifice your favorite facial types. In the vanilla game, there are over 10 facial types that come with a default. He recreated every single one to match his mod, 1 to 10. Let's scroll down over here. They should be Hanman NXTG type 1 to 10. Scroll back up, check out your character type, in this case it's 0 1. Go back down and select the matching facial type, which should be type 1. Now that you're done with the facial types, Go into body. This is going to be censored over here just to keep monetization up, but in this case it should be the fourth one. I mean the fifth one, sorry. It's called NXTG Skin01. After that, go into build. He made it possible so that you can pick your favorite build as well. This is censored as well, but go to the sixth one, which is the first one and after that follows the two other. I'm gonna pick the standard one, which should be 02. Once you're done with that, you can go back into the studio and you're ready for the next steps. We're now back into the studio. Do not worry, you're almost done. If you're looking for a great preset to start, Hanman made some very interesting presets. There is ACES, which stands for a more vanilla feel, and HDR, which is more realistic coloring. Once you find your presets that you want, close that by pressing F5. Going to your workspace over here to select your character. We are now going to apply your character skin shader. Open it with your material editor right over here. Now let's go find the facial shader. Scroll down till you find something that looks a lot like CFM Skinhead 02. Going to the shaders tab and scroll down till you find Hanman next gen face. Now let's do the same thing for the body. Scroll down till you see something that looks a lot like CFM skin body 00. Go to the shaders tab, scroll down till you see Hanman next gen body. If you don't want to set up your shaders every time you open a scene, there's a way to set them up into your character editor so that they're always on by default. Here's how you do it. I think it's relevant to say that if you go down a bit over here, you're going to get some very interesting sliders, such as transparency base, dynamic, occlusion, and range. Be sure to mess around with these sliders to see what they do. Alright, now all our shaders are compiled, and you're ready to go. Let's go for some performance issues that you may encounter. Naturally, as the title might suggest it, this is a next-gen skin mod. So it's normal that your old graphics card may not be able to run it very smoothly. So now let's talk about performance issues. Press F5. I'm going to explain also these slides over here, so we have less questioning afterwards. Over here we have the colors for your subsurface scattering. By sliding these, you can change the color that you'll have a preview over here. As you can see, the subsurface scattering is more green around these areas. I like to leave it at red because it gives a more realistic feel to it. Over here we have our blur size. Do not exaggerate your blur size as it's going to look a little bit less good, if you ask me. I usually leave it at around 1.3, 1.2, which is a nice spot. Now, to optimize your experience, there is post-process iteration and shader iteration per pass. If you're having trouble running the mod, lower these settings over here. 
1 to 2 should be fine for you. If you're able to run these at a higher performance, turn these up to around, I'd say 10, maybe 5 is good. You can even go a little bit higher if you feel like it. There is downscale factor, which I do not recommend because you're going to lose a lot of quality if you slide this one up. Stick to post-process iteration and shader iteration if you want to save on performance. And turn downscale factor to zero. Over here we have layers which are currently not enabled and view buffer which are also not enabled. Dithered's intensity may be set to one by default. I recommend setting it to three or four, so usually I leave it to 3.5 to stay in the middle. And that should be pretty much it. You are now ready to make the most out of your next gen skin texture. For those who want to learn a little bit more, I'm going to be doing a little workshop like this at the end of the video, so follow along and maybe you'll be able to learn a few things. So this is a basic scene with nothing modified. I just loaded up a character and posed it. Um, first off, we're going to load a preset. Press F5 and go into your presets. I'm going to choose HDR. Now you're going to see that skin is no longer gray because we're actually using the shaders now. Might also want to pick a nice um, skybox. I like these interior skyboxes because they're very easy to work with. Pretty sure this is the one I just used. I could use something different this time. Yeah, this one has a nice light source over here. Now, there is something I forgot to mention previously, is that there is also a teeth shader and a tongue shader. So let's open her mouth just to see the difference. It looks a little bit silly, but let's live with this. Open your material editor. By the way, if you wanted to scroll a little bit faster, go into filter over here. So for the teeth, it's T O O T, which should pop up just with T O O. It's C M tooth. Go into the shaders and scroll down until you find teeth. This looks pretty good. Um, you can also scroll down, go to gloss, and change the glossiness. I think 7.4 seems about right. Now let's change the tongue, which is a thang. <laughs> there we go. Go down as you usually do, and select Hanman Next Gen Thung. Tongue. How do you say thong? <laughs> it's not very French. Hey, this is pretty cool. It's a pretty good looking tongue. It's gonna be the first time ever I'm gonna say that. <laughs> um, you can also change the gloss for this one. But it's normal for a tongue to be wet. <laughs> Never quote that. You also have your trans base, dynamic, occlusion, and range, as usual. Which is pretty cool. I like a very high dynamic fortress. Also, another thing I forgot to mention, which is pretty cool. Let me just change a bit the field of view. I like a little bit of field of view, but I think this is a bit intense. It should be better. Go to filter and type body. If you're looking to have some veins on your body, go down over here and scroll to the vein opacity. Maybe hard to see, but yeah. These are the veins. <laughs> Something very interesting that Haman showed me recently is that you can actually increase the vein color by entering the values manually. Oh god! <laughs> Let's not be that intense. <laughs> 20, 20, and maybe 20. 
you know what? This one to one. And put this one to one. Oh man, this is crazy. <laughs> now if you want your veins to be less blurry, press a 5 going to your subsurface scattering and reduce the blurry size. Oh yeah, this is pretty cool. This is wicked. I love that. So, let's turn off these veins a second. There's a little bit more I want to show you before going into the actual workshop. Gonna reset these and lower the opacity. Turn up my blur a little bit. There is also a X gloss to control how your character looks. Obviously glossy, aka wet. Be sure to have the same values for your body as your face, so you can copy over here by Control C and go to your face. I don't know why the window is gonna go down again, but it always likes to do that. Am I going to have the face with F-A? Apparently not. I'm going to have to find the face manually. Aha. Uh -huh. It's not face, it's head. That's my problem. My mistake. So, go down to the sliders, go to X gloss, and control V your value. Let me change your expression. <laughs> I think that tongue's gonna be a little bit dry. Nice smile, it's pretty cool. Uh, seems like a nervous smile. <laughs> this is nice. So, let me just reset the X gloss. Go to body, and reset that one as well. Let's try to do something interesting with the lighting. I'd like to get some subsurface scattering on the ear. This is why I chose this character exactly. <laughs> Let's start by lowering a bit the camera light intensity and add in some directional lights. I think directional lights are the lights that look the best. Let me just switch to deferred rendering. Because with the third rendering, we can have an infinite amount of light sources, which is pretty interesting. Let me change this one to a more hot tone. Let's rotate that a little bit. I love how this looks. The skin shader looks just amazing no matter how um, different the lighting goes. I just love it. I'm just get this behind her ears and higher the bias and the intensity. See this over here? This is why you do it. <laughs> you got all of that. Just rotate this a little bit. Alright, this is looking pretty good. Let me add another directional light, just to fill in the frontal piece of her face. Eek, that's weirdly put. <laughs> frontal piece. Okay, let's rotate this to get to the front. I'm gonna hire the bias for this one by a lot. 
I'll lower the intensity a bit. I don't want to be too blasted. I still think this backlight is a bit intense. There's a lot of tweaking and error. Eventually you'll find something you like. Tweaking error, I mean trial and error. <laughs> I'm not liking this transition with the hair over here. starting to look pretty good. I still would have wanted a little bit subsurface scattering on the ear. But I think it's okay. This is nice. I like this. I'm starting to get something interesting here. Let me hire up the post process iteration. Post process iteration. I cannot speak at all today. I'm sorry, folks. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. This is perfect. I love this. Now this is a good looking light setup. If you want, you can hire a little bit more of the intensity of the camera light. It's a nice frontal light over here. Good backlight. Alright. This is looking pretty good. Anyway, I hope you learned a little bit more <laughs> into this little workshop at the end. Taking it a little bit smoother than the actual tutorial so that you can follow along. Um, yeah, so. Basically, just be creative, um, be conscious of the limitations, do not do some crazy color grading, and uh, yeah, <laughs> most importantly, be creative. If you have further questions, don't hesitate, comment into the comment section, and I'll be sure to answer as soon as I can. This was a Lava Lab 22, have a beautiful day everyone, peace out.